vaccine mandate as soon as possibly at the end of the year, if perhaps the number of days before the unions are not yet vaccinated, Your Honor, I'm taking this as a $500 monthly, if that were to take another 60 days, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that? They say that they debated it, that they held off. Well, I think offering incentives, providing information, encouraging, I think is well within their rights, and, you know, I think that would be totally appropriate. What's not appropriate under Florida law is to fire somebody based on this issue. We've got to protect people's jobs. We've got to protect people's livelihoods. If you look at the cops and the firefighters and some of these folks who are basically being put under the gun now, you know, my view is, is, look, forcing somebody out of a job who's been serving us for how many months and a year and a half during the pandemic? Any time they had to respond, they did. They responded to COVID-positive patients all the time, and now they're being told that they're going to lose their job? That is fundamentally wrong. And I would also point out, particularly with the first responders, many of them have recovered from COVID. I mean, we now know definitively that that's providing strong protection if you've recovered from COVID. So I'm all about education. I'm all about providing, if they want to provide incentives, that's fine. Although, you know, some of the states that did these lotteries, that didn't end up really moving the needle very much. But nevertheless, I think that's within what's not, what would run afoul of our law is to fire somebody over this issue. We do not want to destroy people's livelihoods. We do not want to have their jobs go. That really will upend a lot of families. Yes, sir. Today we're going to have 50,000 deaths. In fact, we're passing, according to the CDC update. How should Florida reflect on that? And what do you think about that? Well, I think it's been a really tough year and a half. If you look at folks, and particularly for this wave, yes, you still had more that skewed older, but you had more people, law enforcement. I mean, you had folks affecting families in ways that, you know, we're not used to. So I think it's been really, really rough. But I also think that through some of these efforts, I think that we've been able to mitigate that. And I think going forward, if this is an important part of what we're doing, I think we'll be able to mitigate it even further. Off topic a bit, for months before the pandemic, you didn't find any death warrants. Does anyone else have any questions about this, the monoclonal, before? What do you mean? So, well, they'll be announcing that. I mean, hopefully it doesn't come to that. But bottom line is, you know, firing somebody will result in those kind of consequences. And so just, look, my concern with this is a number. The Biden mandate is private. Our law affects the government. They didn't get into private in the legislature. I mean, I think all employees should be protected because I think it's wrong to lose the job. But think about how counterproductive this could potentially be. You know, you have a number of nurses, people working in health care, who have declined. They were the first ones that had access to it. We came in nursing homes and health care staff. And, you know, a number of them declined for whatever reason they did. Many of them have recovered from COVID, of course. You're going to now potentially force people out of an industry that's shorthanded. Because if even 10 percent of those at risk of being terminated decide that they're not going to go through and be forced, you're going to be even more shorthanded. And what's going to happen if you hit a wave in some of these northern states? Like, you know, our hospitals did a really good job of handling the wave that we had in Florida. And I think that they, you know, our view was empower them to make the decisions. You know, we didn't come in and say you can't do electives, you can't do that. Some had to stop it. Others didn't. And they figured that out. But, man, what's that going to do to the workforces if Biden's mandate is allowed to stand? We're obviously going to have a response as soon as they issue the rule. We haven't seen the emergency rule yet. But when they do, we will. But I think it's going to end up being very counterproductive. And I think it's going to ultimately be viewed as very short-sighted. So. It says, well, what it says is basically if you're a government agency, you can't deny, you know, access to that. If you're denying access to somebody to show up for their job, to us, we think that that's something that applies. And the attorney general has reviewed it. And she believes that as well. But, you know, at a minimum, I think that there's going to be broad, broad support from protecting police, protecting fire, 
protecting folks from, uh, from being unfairly terminated, particularly given all that they've done for our, our communities, everything we've done. And, and a lot of them, you, you talk to them, a lot of them have had COVID, okay? So they do have protection. You know, some of them just don't like being forced or mandated on this. And I think some of them probably would have gotten vaccinated anyways by now. But just when you, when, you, when you threaten that, I think some people view it as a matter of principle. When I saw the Orange County fire in Central Florida, they have a number of the firefighters who are vaccinated, but they're refusing to show proof of that in solidarity with some of their other folks. So let's be more understanding of people. Let's try to educate. Let's try to provide data and information. But let's not threaten somebody's job or livelihood over this. I just think it's uh, totally counterproductive. I think it's totally unfair, and particularly for people who, you know, there were some folks during the pandemic who just worked from their home. They were not necessarily out and about a lot, and that was their choice to do that. But the police and the fire, they didn't have that luxury. You can't respond to someone in need via Zoom. You got to be out there. You got to be in the fight. And they were for us. That was one of the reasons why we did the thousand dollar bonuses in this past legislative session. And uh, part of the reason why on 9-11 we reflected 20 years, of course, the lives we lost, which are which has been devastating. But all the people that were running into those buildings trying to save people, that's what it's all about. So let's stand by them. Yes, sir. Oh, I have one in here, and so as soon as we wore it in here, as soon as I'm going, we'll we'll um, uh, wear it out. So, um, okay, well, good. Well, we we're going to hit 100,000 uh, treatments uh, very soon, and we're the fight about making sure Florida is not uh, shortchanged on, on these uh, monoclonals. That's going to be front and center for us. We want to make sure that any Floridian that needs this is able to get it. Uh, but we're also mindful of the fact that we're facing a massive, massive cut in monoclonal antibody treatments abruptly. Uh, just after the president said they would have a 50% increase, we're now seeing more than a 50% cut for the state of Florida. So, so we're gonna fight like hell to make sure that our folks get what they need. Okay, we good?